Hi everyone, I'm Davide. Uh, I co-chair the Hyperscale SIG with Neil, and this is our update on latest activity. We'll go over a recap of what the SIG does and what what is our work. We'll talk about deliverables and the recent the recent activities, the recent updates, and finally we'll close with a few words on what's coming up next. Um, so the Hyperscale SIG uh, is primarily focused on CentOS Stream. Uh, the idea is to have a place for companies and engineers that do work on CentOS Stream deployments at large scale so that we can join forces and try to do all of this work upstream instead of everyone doing it in within their own environments and then never it never seeing the light of day. Um, so we want to foster collaboration both on packaging work but also on tooling and processes and trying to generally make CentOS easier to use and consume for these kind of deployments. Um, while a lot of uh, a number of large companies are members of the SIG, the SIG is by no means exclusive to large companies. If you're interested in doing work in this space, you're more than welcome to join. And we're always looking for more people um, to contribute and help. Uh, we were established in January 2021 with six members. Uh, I'm quite happy to see that the SIG has been steadily growing over the last couple of years. We're now at 29 members. Uh, it's been really, really nice to see this community blossoming, seeing people focus on their areas of interest and developing it further. Uh, we hang out on IRC in Pound Center Cyberskill, which is also a digital matrix. Um, most of us are in the US, uh, so we'll be around in, on US time. In Europe, if you write there in Europe, it might take a while to get a response. We have bi-weekly meetings that are recorded, and you can find the menus there, um, except I think I forgot to update that page for a while, so you might be missing the last two or three. Uh, we also do monthly uh, hackathons and video hangouts, uh, which is something that we found really useful to foster uh, social interaction between, between folks. These are usually a mix of people doing actual works and general just chit-chat and spending time. And finally, we started doing in-person meetups. Now uh, we can go to conferences again. Uh, we had a meetup at Boston last year during DEF Conf US, and we just had one yesterday here, uh, collocated with Connect and FOSDEM. Um, these are a lot of fun, and it's a day where we can spend time face-to-face, -face, work through problems, and discuss what we want to do in the future. If you're interested in, in we'll definitely try to do more of these in the future, so I'd encourage you to attend. Uh, you can find our charter on the CentOS Wiki. Uh, we also have a documentation website on sigscentos.org. Uh, that's where we keep all of our user documentation around the SIG, uh, both for uh, how you can consume our content, but also how people can contribute. Uh, we also post activity reports on the blog, which are all linked there. And uh, uh, we also give conference talks. So our recap our talks are also on that page, so I don't have to link them here. Uh, we use Pegger to track ongoing work, so we have issues on that issue tracker. So if you want to get a sense of what we're working on right now, you can skim that. Uh, so what do we actually do? Uh, the main thing that SIG provides is faster moving package backwards. Uh, so backwards of packages that are uh, available uh, in, uh, in CentOS already, but we would like to be able to track a more recent version, maybe because we do active development, or maybe because there are more features that we want to make available. And these are meant to be dropping a replacement. Uh, the other set of things we carry are packages with policy and configuration alternatives. So packages that are slightly different from the ones carried in CentOS, uh, in terms of options of what is enabled or not. So for example, say an IP tables package that also has the legacy backend enabled. Um, then the other category of work we have is dedicated repos to track large scale testing for ongoing work. Um, so for example, we have ongoing work around RPM and DNF, and this is not the kind of thing that you probably want to deploy in a production system, but it is very useful to have in a state that is deployable so you can try it out and use it. Um, also as a byproduct, because we do use this stuff at Meta, it makes it very easy for us to deploy it internally in a way, in the same way that it's published outside. Uh, we also do work on the kernel, and I'll talk to that in a little bit. And finally, we publish uh, light DVD ISO images for a distribution spin. So let's start with packages. Uh, packages are deployed in the Hyperscale main repo, which you can install by installing our release package up there. As I said, these are meant as dropping replacements, so they should behave the same as the stock CentOS packages except providing extra features of being a more recent version and so on. Um, if you find bugs on them, please file bugs on our tracker and not on Bugzilla, because otherwise the maintainer of the package in RHEL and CentOS would be very confused because uh, this won't be their package, but our package. Um, we have a PLS hard requirement, uh, well, partly because a PAL is really useful and there's very few instances where you would want to run CentOS without a PAL, uh, but also because a PAL provides a lot of packages that we have as build dependencies. So it, it makes our life a lot easier being able to rely on the work that's happening in Appel. Uh, and actually, most of, time, most of the time, if there are packages we need that are eligible for inclusion in Appel, we'll prioritize getting them in Appel rather than branching them for the SIG, because then they can be useful for everyone, also for people using the rebuilds, uh, RL proper. 
Uh, we build packages for x86, 64, and AR64, because uh, those are the platforms that we can test and apply on. Uh, if someone's interested in adding support for PowerPC or S390, be my guest. We would love someone to come and do that, but we have no ability to test on those platforms. Uh, we have a lot of packages in the SIG, and you can see the tags. I put the link to CBS there if you're curious. The latest things we added were a number of shells uh, for developer workstations, updates to iperf 3 um, a backport of DMI the code for improved hardware support for modern platforms, a backport of Dwarfs uh, for CentOS 7, uh, for um, Pahol specifically. Uh, a backport of Wireshark, uh, which added support for more protocol dissectors, an updated version of the FIO a benchmarking tool, uh, which also added support. So these are mostly hardware enablement stuff now that I notice here. Um, and finally, a number of folks at Meta that work on uh, time and timing infrastructure started working on maintaining an updated version of Linux PTP within the SIG uh, based on the internal one we had. Uh, and this is some. This is a work in progress. This is ideally something that will completely disappear in the future as this gets upstream into Linux PTP proper. But in the meantime, we are maintaining it in the SIG um, and everybody else can use it if they want. Uh, there's also work in progress around OpenSSH and Kimo. Uh, for OpenSSH, uh, this is something that's been driven again by Meta because we have an extensive patch set around OpenSSH that we're slowly trying to upstream. Um, so we're using uh, this is a bit different from how we normally do things. We're using the SIG as kind of a staging area for this, but we're not publishing package builds for this because we don't believe they're in a state where they will be useful for the community. But the sources are on GitHub. So if you're if you were on GitHub, on, on GitHubSendos.org, obviously, not on GitHub. So if you are interested, you can look there. Uh, and at some point, I expect the patch set will shrink to a manageable size, and then we will be able to publish versions of this. Uh, Kimu is the same, slightly similar story. We would like to get Kimu branch for Appel. Um, there's a lot of challenges in doing that, so we're attempting to use the SIG as kind of a staging area for this. Um, again, none of these are in the actual release repository right now because we want only stable stuff to be there. Um, one fairly recent development, well, from last year, I'd say, is that uh, we have automation now to track package updates. Uh, if you run a SIG, you will know that it's, you have to make sure that your packages are higher versions than the one in CentOS. Uh, otherwise, they, they can get shadow when there's a new build that happens in the distribution. Uh, we, we have automation that leverages the MQTT notification that are provided by the project so that whenever there's an update upstream, we get an issue file in our tracker, and then we can go ahead and update our package in time so that there is no disruption for users. Uh, this is still somewhat manual because a human needs to go there and actually make the update. Uh, I'd like at some point to have automation for this. Uh, not necessarily automation to build and publish it because that, that's kind of risky, but at least automation for um, kind of like release monitoring works in Fedora. So something that would tell you this is this works, this builds, here's the diff, and then you can just apply the diff, build it, and if it works, it works. Uh, that's something for in the future maybe. Someone's interested in working on this, by the way. Feel free to talk to me afterwards. Um, one of the main packages that we have uh, in, the, in this repository is systemd. Uh, we we bind systemd and try to track the latest systemd upstream version. Uh, right now we have 250. Uh, we have builds of 251, but didn't tag them in their repo because we weren't satisfied with the amount of testing we've done for them. Uh, Dan, who's sitting right there, is working on 252 right now, and that should be coming up soon. These are built for Cent8 uh, and Cent9. Um, because they are upstream systemd builds, they have slightly different defaults from the one you would find in RHEL or in CentOS proper. This default to the unified hierarchy uh, on both 8 and 9 they also ship a plethora of additional demons that aren't normally available. So they ship OOMD, which on it also needs PSI enabled. They ship network ID, they ship resolved ID, they ship the, the full set of optimizations. Um, we also backported a number of improvements to journal D, uh, which uh, are especially useful if you happen to run on a, a copy and write file system like BadRFS. And because uh, CentOS uses a Linux upstream, these also include a fully functioning as Linux module uh, and I say fully functioning because uh, while we do test this and try to keep it working, um, as far as I know, none of us actually run a Linux in production, so we only have limited experience with it. Uh, so if you find bugs on it, please do let us know. I will try to fix them. Or even better, if you know how Linux works, that would also be useful. Um, you can find our repo there. That's where we track development and stage patches. Uh, we try to have a very minimum amount of patches and all the work upstream. Uh, a number of SIG members are also upstream system D contributors, so that makes it easy. Our RHEL scripts are also public, and you can find them there. Uh, and in general, the development process is reasonably well documented. Um, we also used to have a, a CI on the CentOS CI that would do daily builds of system D, but this is currently broken. 
because of a number of changes that happened upstream that made it made it essentially fall out. Uh, we are hoping to get this fixed uh, concurrently to 252 so we can restore it because it was quite useful to have. Um, and one thing we would also like to add at some point is the ability to spin up VMs so we can do end-to-end -end testing for these builds because uh, system D is the kind of thing that you really want to build a machine to make sure it's working. Uh, another recent addition is that um, SIG members from Intel started working on uh, a number of package backports with optimizations that are specific for Intel processors. These are delivered to their own dedicated tag and repo, uh, so they're not in the main package because they replace system packages. Uh, the one that is released and available right now is Zilib, uh, which improves major in performance improvements by using SSC2. There's also an experimental glibc backport in the works. And these are meant to be API and ABI compatible, so they should be dropping replacements. Uh, obviously, they only work on x86-64, because, yeah. Um, you can find the link there to the tag, and uh, um, the ones for CentOS 9 are in the work. Uh, speaking of CentOS 9, it exists. Um, we target stream 8 and 9 concurrently, and we've also been using the SIG as a way to funnel contributions upstream to CentOS proper as much as possible. We don't want to maintain things in hyperscale if we don't have to. Uh, so uh, throughout the last few years, we've been able to get a number of changes into CentOS Train proper, and that means these are things that we don't have to maintain ourselves. And that's the list which I want for your reading, but you can see later in the slides. Um, I mentioned earlier the large-scale testing. Uh, the main example we have is um, the RPM copy on write work. So we have a fairly extensive uh, patch set on top of RPM and DNF that we've been working on for the past few years that adds copy on write support. So that if you run RPM on a copy on write file system, such as ButterFS, uh, packaging operations are a lot more efficient because they can leverage the file system features. This is in various inactive development, I would say, and we are working with the RPM maintainers to find a path to upstreaming these or upstreaming the parts of these that have to be upstreaming RPM proper so that this patch set can be maintained uh, on its own. Um, but it does work and it is something that Meta in particular runs in production because we find it quite useful. Uh, so we publish uh, the whole stack, so RPM, DNF, Libre repo, the entire thing, into uh, a dedicated tag and a, and a dedicated repo. So if anybody can use it, you can get it by installing the, our release hyperscale repository. And added links there if you're interested in the current development there. Um, on the kernel front, which I mentioned, we uh, maintain a 514 kernel based on CentOS 9.3 for both 9 and 8. So we have a backward of the 9 kernel on 8. Um, this isn't... This is the stock nine kernel with a few minor modifications. Uh, the main thing is that we enable ButterFS support and we backported a number of fixes for ButterFS itself. Uh, so if you, what? And simple DRM, and it reminds me, thank you. Um, so the idea is that if you boot with this kernel, um, you can have a, you can install your system on ButterFS and use ButterFS on CentOS 9 out of the box. There is one catch, which is this does not have secure boot support, uh, which, uh, you can read that CentOS infra issue for the entire story, and I'm happy to talk to you about this over a stiff drink, uh, but it is a too long of a story to go over in this talk. Uh, if you want to try this, it is available in the same repository as mentioned before. Um, where, again, we've been leveraging this work to also contribute to the CentOS 9 kernel proper uh, to try and get changes contributed upstream. Uh, right now, it's mostly been build fixes and enablement changes for other features, but in the future, we would like to find a way that we can maintain subsystems such as ButterFS directly upstream in the CentOS 9 kernel so we don't have to keep them downstream. Um, to this end, we have a, a documentation specifically on how to contribute and work on the CentOS 9 kernel um, because the, we found that the process needed documentation for sure. Um, uh, additionally, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, the talk before me was the KMOS SIG. The KMOS SIG maintains the exact same code for ButterFS, but in a K-mod. So if you happen to run a stock CentOS 9 RL kernel, you can also use KMOD ButterFS if you need ButterFS enablement. And that has been a nice example of synergy between different things. Um, so you have multiple avenues if you would like to use ButterFS available to you. On the user space front, uh, well, again, ButterFS stuff. So you, we backward ButterFS progs from Fedora, we backward composites. Um, Neil also restored ButterFS support in the installer, so you can actually install a system on ButterFS. Uh, we also have a backport of Istil uh, with improved hardware support uh, for modern system. I believe this was actually rebased in Stream 9 already, so we might not need this anymore. I have to double check. Um, finally, uh, Meta in particular uses KPEX extensively internally. 
but the version of KPatch that shipped in CentOS doesn't include the build part, the thing that allows you to make kernel patches, which is the actually interesting part of it. So we, uh, we publish um, backport of KPatch, the latest version with the build part added back, and also including support for kernels built with Clang, especially using PG optimization, which is something that we use internally, but is generally available and hopefully can provide some value if someone else wants to deploy kernel-like patching in production. Um, on the container side, we also have a container image for hyperscale. Uh, this is a um, built from scratch container image. It is not based on the stock CentOS container image for historical reasons. Uh, you can find the scripts that I used to build it there, but it's like what you would expect. It just uses build and the, the normal flow. It's published on Quay. Uh, it used to be published manually, but this day we actually have automation for this. So there is a uh, periodic task that runs in OpenShift that will build and publish these uh, I think every day or something like that. Uh, every week. Well, that's still good enough. So it should, it should still be a fairly up to date image. And it's useful if you want to test something quickly. This has our repos enabled already, runs our system D and all of that. Um, and finally, Neil builds uh, media spins uh, for the distribution. So we have live DVD images that uh, look like the, if you've used Fedora, you know the Fedora live DVD installer images. So that's the same, the same flavor of image, but running centers. We have spins for CentOS 3.8, one with GNOME and one with KDE Plasma. These use our kernel, uh, our system D, and our packages in general. And they're meant to be kind of a showcase of all of the features and tools that are provided by the SIG. Uh, right now, we only have this for CentOS 3.8, and the build process is somewhat manual. Uh, we are hoping to be able to automate this in the future so that we can do builds for this on CBS and also the builds for CentOS 3.9 and release this on the mirror network rather than on a random S3 bucket that I'm using right now. Um, but like, Eventually, this will get productionized better. Uh, in the meantime, if you do try this if, and find bugs, please, again, file them on our tracker. Do not file them to CentOS proper because people will be confused otherwise. Um, coming up, as I mentioned, we would like to be able to do live media images uh, in CBS because uh, that would also be useful for other folks. Uh, you might know that there's also an alt images SIG which is trying to do this kind of work at a higher level so that multiple SIGs can leverage it. And we are working closely with them to try and make this a reality. Um, I mentioned earlier, we're also working on getting Kimu in Appel, uh, which is an ongoing work. And finally, as kind of more aspirational things we would like to do is find a way to implement battery fast transactional updates and deploy them for CentOS and uh, have a set of cloud images published and available for hyperscale on a continuous basis. Uh, I will leave you with a few more links. Uh, again, where you can find us on IRC, the calendar for our meetings, the issue tracker, and uh, if you want to have a long form discussion, we hang out on the Santos mailing list. That's all I had. Happy to answer any questions. Cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>